today we're looking at a lot of leather. <laughs> okay, today we're going to be talking about the four best bushcrafting knives, in my opinion, that money can buy. Now, a lot of people in the comments section will say, oh, just go build your own, or just go make your own survival knife, or your own bushcrafting knife, and in this case, a bushcrafting knife. And while I'm all for that, and I very well may one day, uh, building your own knife can be a tricky process, if, and that's if you even have the right conditions to make them. And I mean, making a really good bushcrafting knife is very hard. Um, and honestly, it's much easier to go out and find a good design and choose that design and run with it as opposed to trying to cobble up your own. So today I wanted to give you guys a heads up in a way talking about some of the better bushcrafting knives that you can buy if you're in the market for a really high quality tool that you can use for wilderness living and bushcrafting. And <clears throat> yeah, so without any further ado, let's jump into this. So the other point that I, or disclaimer I want to add to this video is that I'm putting these in order of monetary value from the cheapest to the most expensive, but that doesn't mean that I think of them in a quality level like that, or that I carry them all, or that I don't carry one more than the other. Honestly, many of these knives for me, regardless to their price point, are very similar in quality. I carry them all very frequently, and I love using all of them. So it's very hard for me to choose a good starting point, but without any further ado, let's jump into the best bushcrafting knives that you can buy in 2020. Okay, so like I said, in this video we're going to be going from highest, or sorry, cheapest to most expensive, and we're starting off with the LT Wright Legome. And let's take a look at this little blade here. So, one thing I will note about this blade, as you guys can probably tell, it doesn't quite look like a factory Legome, and that is because I blued the edge, and that is due to one of my last excursions that I went out on. Uh, the blade got wet, and I didn't know that, and so by the time I opened it back up, it had a nice amount of rust and ultimately patina on it. So, uh, to make the whole blade just look uniform and even, I blued the whole thing. So, if it looks a little bit off-colored, that is because I have purposely blued this blade, and honestly, I actually think it came out pretty well. But aside from that, like I said, this is the LT Wright Legome, and it is a fantastic knife. Now, this is the newest to the collection. Uh, these other knives, I have quite a few years of experience using them, carrying them, and fielding them. But at the same time, I don't necessarily have to use this blade for, you know, five years to understand that this is a fantastic blade. I have had it for a few, I've had it for a good few months now, I think going on eight or nine months, but I have used this quite extensively and it has easily become one of my favorite bush crafting blades. And the things that I really like about this knife and why I think it, I, and why it landed on this list of top bush crafting blades for 2020 is the fact that it offers a great amount of durability and usefulness in a really compact size and that compact size also lends its hand really well to precision bush crafting so even going beyond the fact of just crafting but almost making more intricate and delicate woodworking uh, things so if you are carving more than even bush crafting uh, this knife really fits the bill it has a 1 8 inch blade stock and a very nice very thin tip that is probably not the most durable but is very agile and lends its hand to very fine work and at the same time though what i do like is this blade being made out of o1 tool steel lends it to being a very durable and very tough blade albeit not very rust resistant but it is a very tough and durable blade that holds an edge for a good long while and it throws sparks off of its sharpened spine like a boss. This thing has started many fires with me and overall I cannot say enough good about this blade in this short video. So like I said this is the LT Wright Legome bush knife. Now one note about a lot of these knives is that they are not the easiest to find. The LT Wright Legome being one of them is not a very easy knife to get your hands on but if you can get your hands on one of these guys, you will be thoroughly impressed. This blade is really uh, an amazing choice for bushcrafting. I think that's the best way to sum it up. You know, it can hold a good ferro rod there and throw sparks off of it 
like a boss, and it also has a nice dangler. The, uh, the whole sheath construction is just great. The, the tool as a whole, this whole package, is awesome. And like I said, I can't say enough good about the Legome. Okay, so like I said, we're working our way up in price, and the next tool is going to be the Bark River Knives Aurora. Now this one I was semi-apprehensive to adding to this list because for a long time I really disliked how thin and weak the tip is on the Aurora, and that point still hasn't changed. The Aurora's tip is very thin, and it is ultimately what I would say fragile. I don't necessarily want to say weak, but it is fragile. You have to keep that in mind when using this blade so as to not break the tip or snap it off. However, I will say, and from my own personal experience, Bark River Knives does have an amazing lifetime warranty that prevents against defects. So if you do snap your tip, just let them know and they'll get you taken care of. However, that weakness aside in the tip, the whole blade uh, of this knife is amazing, and that's why I didn't really want to fault this knife as a whole on one simple downside or weakness of the blade. Uh, this knife, once again, as a whole, is a fantastic, albeit maybe on the little bit larger side of bushcrafting blades, it does a great job at general purpose camp tasks. It is a little bit thicker than the Legome, so it does a great job at batoning and once again, though, this full convex grind, you know, really brings the edge down to a fine, really useful uh, blade stock, and it carves like a boss. It does a great job, and maybe one of the best things about this blade, in typical and true to Bark River Knives fashion, the ergonomics are great. It has that perfect Coke bottle shape handle and honestly you can hold this knife and carve with it and craft with it for hours and no hot spots come up nothing feels bad the knife doesn't rub you in the wrong way there's no jimping to uh, create any flare-ups or hot spots uh, this blade is great and I will say there is also another pro to the Aurora and most Bark River knives is there's a million and one options whether you want the A2 a2 tool steel like this blade here or you want CPM 3V or other steels and you can get it in a plethora of different handles. Now this is a pretty basic Aurora and it just has good old green micarta handles and A2 tool steel but uh, this blade you know regardless to what configuration you get it in this is a great blade. Now I would encourage going for the original Auroras because they've made the Ultralight which is a thinner blade stock and a shorter overall knife. They've also, I believe, made longer Auroras, but overall the original Aurora, which has a four and a half inch blade and uh, is, I believe, 0.18 in the thickness, and like I said, comes in A2 or CPM 3V, is my preferred option, but really the Aurora design as a whole is very, very well thought out and is so comfortable in the handle. If you are one of those people that does use their knife for hours and sits down and does crafting and likes to build with their knife or craft with their knife, this is a solid option. In addition, you know, the weak tip on this blade, the very thin and fine tip on this blade, I should say, is something that, while it is, like I said, on the weaker side, it really does lend its hand to finer skills. So, unlike... So, similar to the Legome, it has a very good ability at being very fine and very... Uh, easily able to execute smaller, more detailed work. So like I said, you do compromise a little bit in durability, but you gain in precision, in dexterity. And not to mention it does come in a fantastic Bark River Knife sheath. You know, these things are pretty rock solid whether you throw them on a rig like my other knives or you just wear them around your belt like this. They are great and of course does have a fire steel loop there. So this thing will throw sparks, I should also mention, uh, pretty well in addition. So definitely a top choice for me. Uh, it definitely makes it into the list because it is such a good, well-rounded field knife. Okay, stepping it up into the price, and honestly this blade and the last blade, the Aurora, are pretty similarly priced depending on the options. This one actually is a bit more expensive than the Aurora just because of how I have it optioned here with the, uh, you know, 
dangler on the sheath and the fire steel loop and all that kind of stuff. Uh, with battle lore, it can get more expensive with the options, but by and large, it's about the same cost as the Aurora. Now, the battle lore is also the largest on this list, and she's a pretty big girl. I mean, you can see here, I'll pull up the Legome real quick. And just showing for uh, contrast of size here, you can see that, you know, the uh, battle lore is a good inch, inch and a half longer, uh, or about something like that. Let me see. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the you can see that the battle lore is a good inch, inch and a half longer than the little Legome. But one thing that really impresses me, and the reason why I had to put the uh, battle lore on this list, is because though it is on the larger end of the scale, it's even larger than the Aurora, and it's the largest knife uh, I'll be shown on this list, it still performs very well, and it has a lot of the same characteristics and performance as the smaller guys. And I'm not sh quite sure how Battle Lore was able to con or sorry, Battle Lore. Battle Horse was quite able to condense this knife down and make it perform so well for being such a bigger blade, uh, but it really does. It performs very nice. And once again, this is made in 01 tool steel. I believe there are other blade steel options for the battle lore. And this one is probably the least rare of all the options, but it is a great option, especially if you are a larger person or you have larger hands. This is probably an easier blade to wrap your mitts around and use. Uh, but either way, it is a great blade, and I've used this guy for years, or I actually had an original one, sold it, and I got this one back. And I've been using, between the two, this guy for a few years, and I'm always impressed every time I pull this guy out and use it. Because it has a pretty traditional camp lore or bush lore style, but it's done in a way that it's larger than most camp or bush lores but still performs very well. And the fine tasks, while not quite as easily done, can still be done a lot easier than I was expecting. So this is the Battle Lore by Battle Horse Knives. And once again, comes in a fantastic sheath. Uh, you do have to option them out. You can get a very basic, just uh, leather sheath. And that's what I had on my original one. But for this one, I did option for the uh, fire loop or fire steel uh, kind of sheath for that or holder and of course the dangler on this guy too. So once again, great sheath and a great knife to match. And this is one that if you do decide to go this route, you will definitely not regret. Okay, now on to the last, the final, but maybe my personal favorite on this list. I would say that it's pretty hard for me in my mind to beat this blade. Now, this is the most expensive and can be the most expensive by and large. Uh, it's certainly also one of the hardest ones to find because they just don't make a lot of these or they didn't really anymore or there's, there's just not a lot of them around anymore. And this is the good old classic Bark River Knives Bushcrafter. And this guy took me a little while to track down, but they still exist, they're still out there. And this is probably my favorite, but it is also the most expensive on the list. And it is that for a few reasons. One, of course, this is CPM 3V, which is not a cheap steel and is also the Bushcrafter, which is known to not be a very cheap knife uh, by Bark River. And uh, it's hard to necessarily put this knife into words, but what I enjoy most about this is, once again, the amazing Bark River knives, Coke bottle shape uh, ergonomics. They fit my hand like an absolute glove, and I feel like this blade, although it is the smallest on this list, has the best balancing. I feel like uh, whenever I hold this knife, I can do just about anything I need to do with it. And honestly, from the past when I've used it, and currently to this day when I use it, I feel that same way. I feel like this knife is one of the best knives for just doing things. If you need to take care of simple camp tasks, you can do it. Fine skills, you can do it industrial skills you can baton this thing through a rock if you really wanted to this thing is just tough as hell and it's built like a tank but it's also built in a way that similar to the battle lore you know you take a look at this knife it's pretty homogenous it's pretty uh, it's pretty generic it doesn't have any you know really striking features to it but darn once you start using it and you you know start playing with it 
and carving and crafting, this thing becomes such a capable blade. And I think that has a lot to do with the really high Scandivex grind that this blade has. It does a superb job at cutting, crafting, notching, uh, just about anything you need. And once again, paired with a reasonably small blade length, I believe it's about 3.375 inches, it's pretty short. But uh, pairing it with that, it, it just does a fantastic job. There's, there's really not too much I can say about this blade. It's kind of one of those blades you have to use to experience. But uh, it is really a fantastic knife, and I absolutely love it. If you do get any one of these blades, especially this one, uh, they are the kinds of bushcrafting knives that you can have for the rest of your life. Use them and be perfectly contented. And honestly, whether you have all four of these blades or you only have one of them, they will serve you very well and you will not have a problem with any of them. And once again, if you do all of these companies from LT Wright to Battle Horse Knives to Bark River Knives, they all are very, they all have very generous warranties. So should anything happen to any of these blades, you can send them back and they will replace, repair, or refurbish your blades for you. So, yeah, pretty awesome knives, and like I said, really, really legendary blades. And uh, something that I really do enjoy about a lot of these knives, and something that really kind of notes them as a higher quality blade, something that, you know, really stands out, is that, you know, a lot of the features, the steels, the materials that go into these knives, you know, higher, maybe not higher quality, uh, knife companies like Cold Steel or SE Knives are only just coming around to using these types of premium blade steels, these types of premium materials, and so these knives really were paving the way so that even though many of these knives are not necessarily new to the blade market, they have a lot of features that the competition is only just now catching up on. So they're very much forerunners, and once again, you know, it's the proof is in the pudding with these blades. They're awesome and really you will not have a problem if you run any of them. However, I will say in closing with the Bushcrafter here specifically, you know, there are plenty of options for it. You can get other steels. I do encourage getting the original or the OG Bushcrafter uh, like this one because they're harder to find than the Ultralights, but, but Bark River ended up making, you know, different forms like the 2.0 uh, Bushcrafter and the Ultralight and neither of them I particularly care for, and I ultimately think the best bushcrafter is the original if you can find one in CPM3V like this. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily have to have fancy scales, but the CPM3V original bushcrafter, not the ultralight, not the 2.0, not the ultralight, not the 2.0, just the original Bushcrafter is the way to go. They're hard to find, but they can be found, and if you can find one, I highly encourage picking them up. But once again, any of these blades, whether it's the Bushcrafter, the Legome, the Battle Lore, or the Aurora, will serve your purposes very well in the woods. As always, guys, God bless, and I'm out.